Welcome back to the Sampan Viking on China channel. Continuing a the theme, um, today's discussion is going to be about the international rules-based order versus international law. And this is a, a, a continuation of the recent couple of videos discussing the, uh, the new battle lines in the new superpower confrontation. And, and this is actually going to be quite a useful one because it actually gives a little bit more context perhaps than simply the, the bare bones which have been been looked at in the previous videos. I must say at this point I'm very very grateful to um, YouTuber and RT broadcaster Alexander Mercurius um, for his insightful um, examination of this very issue and using his keen barrister's brain to identify and uh, describe very uh, very succinctly um, the underlying process uh, which I think is we are seeing in this confrontation. Uh, to put it bluntly, we've all been aware um, that, the, that the United States is using this system called the International Rules-Based Order in order to do basically what it likes, where it likes, when it likes and how it likes. Um, but I think what's now been shown very clearly is that there is, if you like, an ideological um, element to this as well, and which isn't a particularly um, good ideology either, I have to say, and it does rather simply cement um, the, the more general, um, the more general concepts of uh, a nation run by the whims of billionaires. This actually solidifies it somewhat into a more of a codex. So what the argument is is that the international, the new international rules-based order is nothing more than the ability to facilitate um, Western billionaires to move their money around um, where they want, when they want, how they want, without um, obstacle, and that for any obstacles that may exist within any country they wish to put their money, um, that political system, those political obstacles have to be removed. So in other words, it is an ideological charter um, for these uh, multi-billionaire types to be able to effectively plunder the rest of the world with impunity and to use the military might of the United States in order to achieve it, um, sold to us as enforcing the new um, international order, rules-based order. Um, this of course is completely different from international law. Um, it is actually contrary to international law and this I think does put a form of ideological battle line into um, into the uh, already quite heady mix of the ones that we have. Um, it means effectively that uh, we have on the one side um, the West saying that uh, we are a law unto ourselves and we answer to nobody, being pitted against powers that say there is genuine international order, there is general international law, and people, all people, um, have to answer to it. There is no such thing as exceptionism. And that could well be the defining um, term um, which describes how this, comp how this competition, how this conflict, how this um, confrontation pays out. Um, it may very well come down to be ultimately the war versus US, um, the war against US exceptionism. Um, quite a thought that, isn't it? So this is what we may indeed be looking at. And it, it manifests itself in, in many ways. Um, it, it, I, I, there's no, I can't really go down to describe how, you know, it's differently from what I've already described in previous videos. We've looked at what this means on the ground. Um, it means exactly that. It means a, a system that, uh, that promotes sounds great in principle for everybody, this total freedom, total um, world of opportunity, but in reality the freedoms and opportunities are only really there for the super rich because nobody else has the financial resources in order to in, you know, enforce their right to enjoy it. So it is a sham and this is coming up against a system which again based in international rules which values rights and responsibilities, which believes in a more balanced and a better managed society, in which case in where the interests of the ordinary people are far better protected against the excesses and predations of the super rich, 
or indeed the, um, the super motivated causes um, that exist on the other end of the scale. It gives normal people um, the right to live normal lives without having undue interference or intrusion um, by, by the self-appointed on either side. Um, so uh, very interesting to put it into, into that context. And this then comes down to not only two sets of social and cultural norms, but they line up against two different versions of how international relations and international order should work. And it is going to be, I think, quite um, a cataclysmic um, contest when these two really start to go head to head, as indeed it could very well be starting to do. Um, we know that there is a build-up um, in and around Taiwan. We also now know that there are build-ups in, in Russia, which are in a, in, a, in a useful staging point for massive amounts of troops, which are useful staging points for moving forward to the Ukraine border, should that ever need to do so. And I think it's significant that we are seeing these two things happen at the same time. Um, we discussed, again in previous videos, the reality of the Chinese, of the Sino-Russian um, strategic partnership and how that partnership works, that alliance works through coordination in, all, in both their respective spheres of interest, both one protecting the, the, rear, of the, um, the rear of the other and the other um, having a, you know, being able to undertake its, um, its, its specific special um, operations in its own spheres. And these being coordinated to happen at the same time in order to split the Western response to it. This is, seems to be what we're seeing. Now, this does not mean by any measure that conflict is about to break out. Um, these moves are the kind of thing you'd expect to see as part of negotiation, and negotiation is possible, because negotiation is not a game. Um, it's not just done, it's not just a simple set of rules, you say this, you say 10, she says 5, you say 7, she say, or you say 9, she says 7, and you end up at, uh, at, at 6.5 or something. Um, it, 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 doesn't, it, it doesn't really work um, that way. Nobody negotiates uh, unless they really have to. Nobody makes any concession or makes any compromise unless they have no choice to do so. The point of negotiation is to find the natural balance of power, and certainly um, when it comes to financial power or supply demand, but in this case, in international power, you know, political power, military power, these negotiations will be about how to find the natural um, balance of power without necessarily having to fire a shot. Although military action can be a part of that mix, um, but if it's done within the context of a negotiation, then it, it means that they're, they're just testing each other and rather than declaring all-out war. Uh, but you can have incidents um, and, and they see who wins, whose weapon systems are the best. It's all part of the calculation to find out where that real balance of actual power lies. Uh, so they are preparing for negotiation because otherwise if they didn't believe they had to, they wouldn't. Um, if you have overwhelming firepower, you don't negotiate. And if you go through the motions of the negotiation, it's simply because you want time to mobilize properly. Um, you're just buying time. So that, I think, is a quick roundup of this. It is now going to be a contest that we can, uh, we can summarize, I think, as a contest between um, international law and, and, uh, and the West's rules-based international order. And understand that a lot of the things that we see coalesce around these banners, um, if you like, um, and reflect a lot of other values and, um, and attributes um, that exist on both sides. But ultimately, it does boil down to a contest between one side that believes that wealth should have untrammeled privilege and right and exception, whilst the other one that society should be more balanced and that ordinary people should have some respite from the predations of their uh, of their billionaire masters. That's a fairly short video for me. Um, I hope it has got my message across in a concise manner, as I always do, because these videos are never planned or scripted. I just try to express ideas as well as I can. If you enjoyed it, um, please like. Um, if you do not dis have not subscribed, please do. It helps the channel to grow, and it is free to do. If you'd like to be notified of further videos, ring the bell. And if you would like other people to listen to what I have to say, um, please share. If you would like to ask a question or give 
an opinion, please comment and I will reply to the best of my ability where appropriate. Thank you very much. I hope you will join me on the next video.